What's going on, all you mentees? Uncanny Omar with... Astonishing Melanie. And today we are doing an advanced overview of the Deadpool and Cable Omnibus from... Marvel! Right? Yes. Yes! Marvel Comics. So stay tuned! Thank you to David Gabriel and the fine folks at Marvel for sending us this advanced review copy. This book is due out in the direct market and book market on April 25th or 26th, depending on where you get your books. And what we're looking at here is the direct market cover. This is the one by Mark Brooks. On the left-hand side is your standard edition cover by Rob Liefeld. Uh, that's the one that's available everywhere, whereas the direct market cover, that one is only available at your local comic book shop or places online like CheapGraphicNovels.com or WaltzComicShop.com, Comics Bugle, Dime Breed Collectors, In Stock Trades, Organic Price Books, Tales of Wonders, DCBS. Keep going. All right. Uh, there, I mean, there there's a go. lot there more places. Go. Thank you. But <laughs> everything else underneath the dust jacket is identical. So let's shift the focus back to this. Well, apparently Deadpool is such the star that his head can cover the name of the second character. Which is Cable. <laughs> now, what's I can't it, read it. What's interesting about this printing, so this is the second printing. You all voted for this book to be reprinted. What's Yay. interesting about this printing is that it's got two new covers. Both the direct market and standard edition are new covers. Because before, we just had this cover right here to the left-hand side. This Dang, only Cable's head is showing. I was going to say, for a book... <laughs> I'm glad that they decided to actually profile Cable, because for a book that's named Deadpool and Cable, even though the original name is Cable Deadpool, but hey, that's well, I'm sure we'll get into that here in a little bit. Uh, there's no much, there's not so much Cable here. As, as a matter of fact, you get you got Domino, Domino and Wolverine, Hammer down Cyclops. there, and Wolverine and Cyclops as much as you do Cable. That is an awesome picture by Patrick Searcher, though. Uh, let's check out the spines. I like both of them. Yeah. The, they show the logo, Marvel Omnibus up there, and then the two characters. However, Deadpool is holding a sigh incorrectly. Just saying. He can do whatever the hell he uh... wants to. He breaks the fourth wall. And then the back of the book. Looks like they're using different fonts for this I right like up here. the one on the left. Like the one on the left. It's bolder. It's easier to read. Mm -hmm. uh, the ISBN is smaller also in the new printing. Both printings are $125. And here's what it collects colors are a little bit different they're a little more bluish here you have a little more of a greenish finish to the colors on the original printing a little more greenish here you can see i um, hope it shows up on camera so let's look at it oh. underneath the dust jacket whoa come on now going too fast okay whoa look at that what a uh, difference. i really like what they did with the original printing actually before we look at this can i see the dust jacket because people like looking at the flaps Here's the flaps, Ballistic Bromance or Fantastic Frenemies. Why can't it be both? And then the creators over here on the right-hand side. It says the exact same thing in the previous printing. Yes, it says there's a previous printing, so thank you for that, Astonishing Melanie. But yes, I always like the, even though it's the exact same picture, right, as this, I always like the black and white art. I wish they would do more of that uh, in underneath Omnis. I like the idea of having the black and white version or the penciled version for that matter i do i like that idea however when it's next to the new printing i'm like oh i like under the dust jacket better with that one you like the new printing dust jacket yeah. better well yeah okay. i guess but, but their i like the idea of having the pencils underneath like that really connects the dust jacket to the um actual book mm -hmm. but this is actually just one image right here of both cable and deadpool maybe that's why i like it better which a bunch of X logos there. now And, and Deadpool logos. And Deadpool logos. Sorry <laughs> about that. Uh, we are going to be doing an internal comparison, and of course the build, and, and including the eye, because we're looking at a new printer over here. Uh, this is not the iMac nor the Donley printer. This is the Mega printer. So actually, let's... And it, it was not as strong smelling. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. as some of the iMac printers. It is still printed in Turkey, though, but it's at a different printer. So we are going to be looking at the paper stock and then talking about the build and, of course, that eye. Because for a book this big, this is a big book, has over 1,200 pages, you're going to need a big eye. So I think 1,272. All right, we're going to crack this open. Minor spoilers, but we have to talk about this era of Cable and Deadpool and some of the stories that it might tie into that changes the tone of the book later on. 
But again, those are just minor spoilers, not going into heavy details. So, and as you notice, perhaps you said Cable and Deadpool. I did already? Yeah. <laughs> I knew well, we yeah, were that's, going to. <laughs> that's what the book is called. All right, let's get this open. Let's go ahead and crack this sucker open. Crack. Did not make that sound. Mm -hmm. We have some crimson red, I assume. Is that what this is? Oh, don't ask me. Okay. Hey, the... comment below. Which shade of red is this? You're the one with the masters in English. Uh, the... Not in art. Not in color? Okay. No. Here... You have to help me match my clothes, dude. Uh, okay, okay, easy. Too much information. Uh, so, yes, the mega print in Istanbul, Turkey, which very not well... Constantinople. Please don't. Don't bring them my pajamas. So... This very well could still be the iMac printer. Constantinople. Maybe it's another section of the iMac printer. I'm not sure. But it definitely feels different. Like, you don't have that feel of... You know, like people say that it feels dirty when uh, coming out of the oh, iMac printer because of the ink. Yeah. And the paper stock seems different. But we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. Let's, let's get to this. Now, the important thing about this is that here is the credits. This is it. You're not going to get the credits within the issues. You're not going to see who is drawing each issue. The way to find out is here. So Fabian is, of course, writing the majority of this with the exception of Deadpool and the GLI Summer Fun Spectacular. That was Dan Slott. And Riley Brown helping co-plot the final two issues of Cable and Deadpool. But as you can see, for the majority of this, it's mainly Patrick Searcher and Riley Brown drawing the issues of Cable and Deadpool. Mark Brooks, this is when I found out and it broke my heart that as great and talented as Mark Brooks as an artist is, he just could not keep up a monthly series. It was impossible. So he, he lasted two issues. Uh, Udon was doing the colors, as you can probably tell when you were reading, because this is your first time reading this, isn't it? Yeah, I got fake memories. I could have sworn I read something in the past, but apparently I did not. Mm. So this collects Cable and Deadpool 1 through 50, Deadpool JLA, not JLA, GLA, Great Lake Avengers, Summer Fun Spectacular, and then material from Deadpool number 27, which is a big, it's a big wedding. It's somebody's wedding. All right. This takes place during the era of X-Men comics where there was no Cable comic, there was no X-Force comics, and there was no Deadpool comic. Uh, Deadpool had turned into Agent X, and that series got canceled. Soldier X got canceled. That was Cable. And then Ecstatics ended up getting cancelled. And for a while we didn't have any X-Force. We didn't see these characters. And every once in a while one of the X-Men writers would put them into a comic. But that was about it. So it was a really strange era to mention that. Hey, these characters weren't in a monthly comic book. So I'm not sure who it was that approached who. But Fabian Niciesa, the guy that co-created Deadpool. Came in and wrote these issues, all 50 issues that are found here. And I, I think it was an editor that approached him that probably was like, okay, we don't have these two comics, let's put them together and make it like a Heroes for Hire type of book, like a Power Man and Iron Fist, the Bosom Buddies, right? <laughs> type of adventures. You said Bosom Buddies. Yes, I did. Now, I'm sure one of the big questions is do you have to know much about Cable and Deadpool to understand the stories in here? Uh, they haven't had a series for a while, but... I don't think so. Okay. But there are characters, though, that show up through yeah. here that it, you get a little more of a payoff if you had read, like, Joe Kelly's run of Deadpool. If you had read the Deadpool miniseries by Fabian Ciesa. If you had read Cable series during the Ladron years, which introduces us to Irene oh. Merriweather. But now we have Google. And I think I... one time I just looked it up. I'm like, oh, okay, that's who he is. I hate that you just <laughs> said that. Oh, anyway, uh, so... What is I the... didn't earn my street cred. No, I'm not. so sorry. You did not earn your street cred. What is the premise of Cable and Deadpool, Melanie? How do how do these two characters end up in the same comic? What 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 happens? That's awesome. Um, for just they play off each other's foils. That's what happens. But I mean, what what brings them together? Oh oh oh! You I mean, mean in the story? Okay. Yes. Um. Well, you see, Cable is this ultra powerful psychic mutant who's like. Dude, Professor X, you ain't doing squat. I'm gonna take my powers and help the world. And Deadpool is just a merc for hire. And he's like, uh, okay, I'll go fight uh, my buddy Cable if I have to. Oh no, maybe I changed my mind. Maybe I changed my mind back, etc., etc. So you've got the two of them fighting and they both have these 
um, ultra healing powers, so it doesn't matter that they kill each other. And then secondly, you, you got buddy moments, bosom buddy moments, as my husband suggests. <laughs> Um, yeah, and who are these blue guys that we see throughout the first few issues that kind of help bring them together? Who's this cult? Well, that, that's what I was going to say. It's a cult. And they are trying to unite the world as well by making everybody blue. At least that, you know, the, the start of it. Okay, and then um, Cable takes it a step further. Um, I won't say how. Good. But <laughs> you're welcome. That's how you do a non-spoilery conversation because you can easily give away some things when talking about these books um and i think that, that that's good you know that that sets up somehow well, and it, without we, going into detail how did they end yeah. up together because there's a body slide problem right for people that don't know body slide that's the body term. slide by one that's right body slide is the term that i googled it <laughs> damn it <laughs> you, you could have just asked me you weren't around uh, I was in dc okay <laughs> anyway uh body slide is the term that cable uses to teleport to locations when he had that satellite right when he was using professor because he comes from the year 3000 plus so he's using technology not available to us so that's what he yells uh, professor not, not body slide by one not the professor pro this professor he named a professor after this professor correct and now we have patrick searcher coming in with a very similar cartoony style obviously you know the editors knew what they were doing. They were like, okay, we need somebody... That's so awesome, by the way. We need somebody that can draw like this in a simpler, cartoony style, but can carry a monthly series. And Patrick Searcher and Fabian had worked together before in the pages of Thunderbolts, which well, I'll be doing an advance overview next Monday, Volume 3. But... Um, I want to point out in that previous picture, you may have seen that the cult kind of um, speaks to Wade Wilson. Um, with, I mean, of course, Fabian Nicias of being the co-creator of Deadpool, um, he does a great job of um, that balance between mostly just fun banter, but also every once in a while, like self-deprecation um, comes from Deadpool. And he's like, you know, because he cares. He cares about the way he looks. Yeah, you know, I think that's why I enjoyed this. I think I enjoyed this run. This is my favorite Deadpool run, by the way. And I know I try to stay neutral when doing overviews, but I think I've made it pretty clear on my channel, especially when I got to announce the reprint of this, that I, I love this run because I think it is a good balance of action, adventure, stupid comedy, but wholesomeness. Yes, and the way the X-Men react to Deadpool. Well, when he wants to join <laughs> yeah, the X-Men. No, well, just multiple times. Like, do we really have to save him? <sighs> oh, they all hate him. It's funny because everybody throughout this book, even returning characters that played an important part in uh, Deadpool's life, they can't stand the character. No spoilers. Just one time Cable was like, oh, it's good to hear your voice. Oh, yes. That was <laughs> one nice. One time. Uh, but yes, that's what the basic premise is. You see returning characters like the uh, Agency X returns throughout here, surprising characters. Of course, you're going to have Domino play a big part in all this because she has ties to both Cable and Deadpool. And speaking of ties, Aww. Fabian Nicieza had the task of having to write his comics through massive crossovers, <laughs> uh, through big events through Marvel, like Secret War, uh, no, sorry, not, not Secret Wars, uh, Civil War, and things like that. And, and he breaks the fourth wall. Well, yeah. He, <laughs> he, he, he knows. Kinda, he's just like, yeah, this is what's going on. <laughs> yeah. I think he knows this target audience through here that through the character of Deadpool, he gets to make fun of these events. Uh, not to take itself seriously. And I think that's what this whole book is. But again, it has some wonderful, wholesome moments, especially between Cable and Deadpool and how much they care for each other. Which is so ridiculous when you think about how it all starts and how it all ends. By the time you get to the middle, these two are completely inseparable. But then something happens. Oh, it even has ties into, like, Peter Milligan's run of X-Men. It's got tie-ins to Mike Carey's run of X-Men when Cable was joining the X-Men. So Deadpool gets a little bit of jealous that he's not spending that much time with him anymore. <laughs> and then... Even when something happens throughout one of the big crossovers in X-Men that I'm not going to mention because it's a little bit of a spoiler, Fabian Iciesa is still able to deliver a story. And I don't know how the hell he did it because something significantly changes and it changes the tone of the book. And he does such a great job. By the way, one of my favorite things that he did through here is team both Cable and Deadpool up with Power Man and Iron Fist. I freaking love that i thought that was such a good touch as the return of shang chi as well 
Uh, I got a segue. Look at this segue. All right, speaking of tone, here, go back, go back. Has he always had a yellow shading to his speech bubbles? So uh, that you have a different tone in your head subconsciously? Like, I think at his first, voice is special. I think at first this started because he was wearing a mask. But by the time... But other people wear masks. I know, but by the time you got to X-Force, you knew something was going on with his voice. Like, maybe he was... Something wasn't right underneath the mask, and that's why he sounds like that. Uh, again, this book has this is the X Men years, uh, twelve hundred and seventy two pages, retailing for one hundred and twenty five dollars. This is when Squirrel Girl started to happen when they brought her out of obscurity to join the Great Lake Avengers. Let's take a look at the extras. Let's look at the back matter and then we'll compare it. Look at that; it's beautiful. Uh, we'll compare it to the original printing. Oh, and before we get to the back matter. One thing I forgot to mention was all the letter pages and recap pages are included yes, in here. Those are fun to read because Deadpool is answering and he's making fun of everybody that writes in. Yeah, so people write in and it's Deadpool. I mean, Fabian, of course, having fun with Deadpool. No, it's voice. Deadpool. He's real. Okay. If he can okay. break the fourth wall, he's in our, uh, what's it called, universe. Oh, okay, okay. B. Arthur! This is where the B. Arthur joke started. This is the origin of the chimichanga obsession, which kind of became a thing. Except he doesn't like chimichangas. Oh. He likes enchiladas. And then but they're not on, as fun to say. The later on, something else happens. All right, so here's the note from Fabian. This is such a sweet note, too, uh, because K, uh, Deadpool was just going off in the final issue, talking about how dare you people not buy my comic <laughs> book. And here Fabian kind of, in his own way, breaking the fourth wall, saying, look, Deadpool is wrong. You are not to blame for the cancellation of this book. We have 50 wonderful issues. And man, I, I hated Buy the, the hidden images. I hated that this book got canceled because it was so good. But you know, I mean, 50 it, issues though. That, that's yeah, a good these run. days, yeah. with the same creative, well, the same writer. Uh, you know, but things always change. That's that's the thing with X Men. This is where they put the uh, issue number 27 of Deadpool. So after the extras, and then we get a little bit of Agent X here for some reason. <laughs> Just, just <laughs> randomly, the character sketch. I, what I was going to say is, yes, things constantly change in X-Men, right? After this, it's where you got Daniel Way's run on Deadpool and where you got Cable, Lone Wolf and Cub story. All right, let's check out the binding. Holy crap! Okay, I got too excited. I love when eyes are that big. That that, that gives so me... That's a hot dog on the bun. Oh my gosh, I forgot who I'm reviewing this with. ketchup, and relish. That could fit three without messing up the Omni. Try it out at home, folks. Please do not stick See anything through that hole. I see relish. All right. You can fit relish in there. I'm sure, you know, Marvel's not going to appreciate that. Okay, so <laughs> it is sewn binding. Again, 1,272 pages. That is one big eye. So what I'm going to do is compare it to the original printing, this one up here, that came from the Donley printer, printed in 2014. This is the new printing right here at the Mega Printer. Um, <laughs> this eye, I always say these are like the roast beef sandwich eyes because they're kind of not, you know, they're not perfect. They're not angled like that. And you don't want it to be what? too too angled. Roast beef? Because roast beef sandwich lays like, anyway. I don't get it. Oh, I yeah. I get my hot dog. Which one makes more okay, sense, please. folks? No, none of them make any sense. Hot dog can pass through the eye or a roast beef <laughs> sandwich analogy. I don't ah, know. Forget it. All right. So anyway. You don't want this to be too angled, too. You don't want it to be like a perfect triangle because that can that can do away at your sewn binding. So that's good right there. But this is the original printing. We're going to do a quick comparison as to how they both lay over in the paper quality, too. So we have the old original printing over here and the new printing over there. My wonderful assistant's going to help I me. I say this is magenta and this is berry. There you go. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, definitely a different shade. All right, let's keep going. Okay. Mm. Looks like they're bolded lettering over here. Uh, Donley printer, again printed in 2014, and this is the Mega printer printed at the end of 2022. So we've got more vivid over here, I'd say. Yeah. Muted over there. I mean, not muted, but just in comparison. Uh, definitely a little bit brighter. And honestly, I think this is a matter of taste, right? Like over here. This looks more like a sunset color. That's pinkish. Than the pinkish color right here. Let's keep going. And then I do want to do a comparison of the white pages, but I don't think that's a good example because there's nothing but black on the opposite side. Um, what I was saying is I think it's all a matter of taste, right? Some people appreciate the 
muted or brighter colors, if you will, or lighter colors, the lighter tones than the darker tones used over here, like you can see on the blue cult members there and the purple shirt. And we'll find some double page spreads and... Feel the paper! Mm -mm. And white pages, mm -mm. too. Here. This... This... This one! This one... What? This one's thicker! Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. The new printing is thicker. Not by a lot, but you can tell it's thicker. By 0 0.05 milliliters. Please. Milliliters. No, we're not doing Millimi that. Millimeters! We're not doing... No, we're definitely <laughs> not doing that. But it, it definitely has... Thicker paper than this. Still glossy, but thicker than this printing. Again, it could very well be the iMac printer just with the new name Mega, or one of the one of the buildings is called the Mega Building. I don't know. Uh, let's look at some light pages though. Previously on X Men. I think that's what they were going for. Uh, I think this is a perfect example. So you here you have white page with some panels and word bubbles in the on the other side. So let's take a look at this. And I'll be 100% honest with you, because I'm looking for it, I can see the frame up here. I can see that this is a word bubble. But I couldn't tell until he pointed it out. But it's just things like that that I look for because, you know, it does bother some people. Over here, I have a hard time. But because I know there's a word bubble here, I have... I, I, can, I, I still I can't can see it. Maybe oh, oh well, one. yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Oh, now it's gone. And keep, it's like a magic eye from the it's 90s. It's not like a magic eye. Keep in mind. <laughs> no, because once you get the magic eye, it doesn't disappear. You're like, okay. what? Okay, well, we're also in our 40s, so mileage may vary, too. Your, I've got 20-year-old eyes. eye drops oh, that gosh. actually I need to insert to my eyeballs pretty soon. Your 20-year-old eyes is all what I was going to say. <laughs> Might be able to see these things better I'm than we are. I'm saying that these eye drops are helping me. Okay. Things people needed to know on near big condition. All right, let's find a double page spread, please. All right, I think this is a perfect example. I love that cover. That's a life field cover. Oh, his hair's all combed. But and here neat. is a double page spread. Now the book, because of the eye and the way I mean, that it lays over, I could push it. Well, yeah, right. But I did want to show how having a bigger eye does help out with that gutter loss right there. Uh, this new printing, keep it, or the old printing, has been read a lot. So it's been properly open, whereas this one was only open once, and then my lovely wife has been reading it. Uh, this has been shown a lot of love, so therefore, I think the eye probably looks like what I said, roast beef. Uh, I don't get it. All right, I'm not explaining myself. But anyway, so it, it looks like you get a little bit more artwork here than you do over here. So not that their gutter loss is big over here. It's very minimal. Mm -hmm. But it's still just a little bit, just a little bit more. I like over here. I like the tones and the colors over here better. Okay, let's uh, let's do another page. So here is another example of a double page spread to show the difference in the gutter loss right there and right here. I may need to point out the knee cap and the thumb right there, mm -hmm. and which one you get a little bit more artwork. And honestly, they, it's about the same. I'm comparing, like, the gun blast right there from Agent X. Yeah, it's about the same. All right, we'll do one more. And here's the final comparison. Another double-page spread. This is uh, during the Civil War tie-in issues. Look at that butt. That's why you chose this page? Oh, my gosh. Can't hold a candle to Nightwing. All right. That's it. That, as they say, is yeah. that. There you go. If you're interested in checking out this book, check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answered within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. 
They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. So that was the build, page count, content, and comparison of Deadpool and Cable. Don't you dare call it Cable and Deadpool. But that's the original title. It's Cable and Deadpool. They can call it whatever they want to. No, they can't. So, if I have to say it right, everybody does. So this was the Uncanny Omar with Astonishing Melanie, and that was our overview. Let us know in the comments down below if you've read this series, if you're excited to pick this up because you missed out on it the first time around and you voted for it to be reprinted. So, thank you to David Gabriel and all the folks at Marvel. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love. Stay minty. I don't know what it says. His head's covering a letter. Five. No. Four. Yeah, baby, I need I it. No, I was going to say three, two, one in my head. I thought you wanted to say it out loud. No, don't say that way. Okay. That's an outtake. We're caught. If you're interested in checking out this book, check out our sponsors. Buying this book. <laughs> No, I like it. I like it. You like it? <laughs> they can it check it out from the chicken. library. <laughs> All right. Um, and that was the content <laughs> page. <laughs> okay, you don't have to yell. Uh, and that was a content page count build in comparison of this omnibus. <laughs> Go for it. Oh God, get it out of your system, please. Laugh. So that was the build content page count. Comparison. <laughs> comparison. There's only four things we're doing. Wait. Build, page count, content, comparison. Mm -hmm. okay.